Are you ready for some ribbing? There are three types of pork ribs. The spare ribs, huh? the country style ribs, which are a lot more meat down here, and also, of course, the back ribs along the back. Today, I'm going to show you a recipe creating all kinds of ribs dishes featuring each one of these different types of ribs. First, we're going to make a wonderful, very popular steamed spare rib with three kinds of plum flavoring. Plum wine, plum sauce, and fresh plum. Very unique recipe. You can order this in a dim sum restaurant. Here, I have some pork rib here. I want to show you. All I have to do is just cut this up, okay? I cut this up with this cleaver. And I first, I cut this up, cut this up, Cut this up along the rib, okay? Cut this up, cut this up. And then the long ones, you go one more time. Uh, one more time. In fact, if I were you, I would ask the butcher in the store to do it, okay? Now just make sure you don't use excessive force and cut your cutting board into 600 pieces. And then you transfer all of these and you put it right here. We're gonna marinate all of these, okay? And the more people, you use more ribs, okay? After this, we're gonna marinate this. You know what I'm gonna use for marinade? I'm gonna use a tiny bit of wine. Plum wine. More plum wine is just as good, but not more than this. This might be too much. And then, a tiny bit of dark soy, give that nice, rich, dark color, dark soy and a tiny bit of regular soy sauce. Look at that, mix them all up. And also, minced ginger to give that wonderful spiciness. And of course, cornstarch to seal in the juice, okay? Mix them all up nicely. And let it marinate for about half an hour to two hours, if you want, even overnight. In the meantime, put in the fridge to marinate. And in the meantime, to make it wonderful, I have plum sauce, okay? I have plum sauce, and I have a tiny, tiny bit of sugar, not much, because the plum sauce is pretty sweet. And also I have some candy ginger. This would really give that nice, wonderful, unique flavor. And if you want, you can even use a tiny bit of crushed chili. When this is all nice and ready, you're gonna transfer all of these, you know where? Right here, put it right here. Look at this, put it right here. And then, of course, you can make this into a wonderful flavor by using some fresh plum. And I'm gonna show you how easy, how quickly it is to cut up some fresh plum. Of course, make sure you clean up everything. And then, you cut this up, okay? And you slice this, one, two, three, four, Five. You see how I slice it? This way, you can actually turn them like this. Look at that, isn't it interesting? And then I put this over here to get the flavor. At the same time, I want to have extra one, extra one. And line them all up, one over here, one over here, one over here, to get extra flavor, okay? In the meantime, we're gonna put this in our steamer. I have bamboo steamer here. I am gonna put it in and I will steam it for 18 to 20 minutes until they are nice and done. Now, bigger piece of rib, you have to cook it longer. Now, my recommendation is do not use a seasoned carbon steel wok for steaming because it can get rusty. So if you do use it like this, I purposely show you how to do this this way. If it did get it, you clean it up and re slightly re-season the top and put a tiny bit of oil. When this is nice and ready, this is already ready. We're gonna put this over here and take it out. First, I push this in, I push this in, and I hold on to the whole thing. Look at that, the whole thing comes out right here. I've been steaming this for a while. And then we shut this off, and we are going to transfer this. A few pieces of these. Look at that, this is really nice. Right here. These are the beautiful, delicious, three plum flavor. 
spare rib that everybody <laughs> can enjoy. Now, unlike spare ribs country style, pork rib are very, very hearty, meaty, because a lot of meat around. So they are actually more like chops because so much meat. I like to simmer them slowly in a very sweet and savory broth and a sauce that they, until they're really nice and succulent and tender and juicy. And I call this Shanghai style red coke rib. First of all, if you notice that I have some country style rib here, they have a lot more meat, okay? So like somewhere around here is a lot more meat. And then I am going to cut this up. See all the meat? Very thick meat. I cut it up along the rib. So this way, you don't even have to chop. See? You just cut it along, cut it along, and set it aside, and remove these. And then we set this aside, put it right over here for the time being, okay? Because I'm going to show you how to make the sauce, the Shanghai Red Cook sauce. And then, in the meantime, I'm going to also show you a little bit about this clay pot that we'll use in China, in many parts of China. You can cook the whole thing in this clay pot. You can serve the whole dish in this clay pot. This, ah, before I forget, I want to make sure everybody know about this. This is a very unique clay pot. There are different designs. One handle, two handle, long, short, big, small, ah, all kinds of shapes. And this, you open it up, you know, look at that, this is glazed. And this is unglazed. But you notice that there's a little hole here for the steam to escape, okay? And then also inside here, you see it's glazed. So it's easy to clean up. It doesn't stick as much. This is unglazed. And then you turn them around. Look at that. This is reinforced by this wire. You know, this would make the clay pot a lot stronger and also not as easily breaking. Broken. So it's this way, you drop it, it won't break unless you drop it from the 13th floor. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to put a tiny bit of this in there, but before you do it, all you have to do is you water blanch, you power boil this for about three to five minutes, get rid of the fat a little bit first. Now, I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to show you how to make the sauce. Here, we have to make the Shanghai Red Cook sauce. Look at this. Here, I have dark soy. I'm going to put some dark soy here, okay? And I have rice wine. Okay, I'm put some rice wine. And I have regular soy sauce. And of course, I have garlic. So look at this. We have garlic. We have ginger. And then we have red fermented rice. When they make the rice wine, this is the leftover red rice. They flavor and they, not really for flavoring, but to color your dish. Hoisin sauce, they also use the green onion, star anise, and of course, rock sugar. And this is interesting. This is red fermented bean curd. Red fermented bean curd is made also with red rice and wine, okay? Now, we're going to put all of these ingredients right here. All of these ingredients, a tiny bit of red rice and ginger and garlic. For the garlic, I would like to slightly press this a little bit to make sure everybody can see. Hop, done. Put it right here. And then, hop, done. You say, hop, hop. You can use any noise. Hop, he, hop. Done. And then, of course, I use a little red piece of fermented bean curd. If you want, you can use a tiny bit of more soy sauce. And then, water to make the broth, okay? This is the bracing Shanghai red cook broth. In the meantime, I'm gonna come over here and get all the ribs that I have boiled for several minutes, okay? Let's take our boil, so get rid of the extra fat, okay? So this way, when you do it, it would not be too much fat. Get rid, this is all we need, okay? We don't need a whole bunch. And then, when this is done, we cover this up and we put this whole thing right in here. Look at that. And then, we cover this up and you know what? We are going to put this over here and we are going to turn this up. Turn this up. This way, 
we can serve these. Now, the most important thing is make sure when you do this, soak this clay pot in water overnight. Make sure when you, in the beginning, have always have liquid and don't use very high heat. Otherwise, they might crack. So very, very important. Don't use high heat. It might crack. When this is done, we'll shut this off and we will serve this. Look at that. This is going to be beautiful. The great thing about clay pot cooking is hot, hot, hot. Put it right over here. You can serve the whole thing right over here. Look at this, how beautiful. Shanghai red cooked ribs right here. <laughs> Do you know which animal has the most rib of them all? A snake. Let us make a little side winding side trip to Hong Kong. I have got to see a man about a snake. Do you get enough bite out of your food? Well, the Chinese certainly do. For centuries, snakes have been part of our culinary heritage, not only for the nutritional value, but as you will see, for the medicinal value too. This is rattle-tailed cobra. Hey, wake up! I am taking you to lunch. You can hear the rattling. Now the snake handler is going to make a small incision to remove the bile duct. And you won't believe what happened next. This is snake wine. Uh, then Here's a bottle of vintage snake wine. After rinsing out of the cup, he opens up the bile duct. Cut it open. Snake bio is believed to contain a lot of medicinal properties. Some say it even puts hair on your chest. I'm going to try it out. I told the bartender to pull me a double and hold the ice. Cheers. Gone bay. Down the hatch, the trick is to do this with your eyes open. Just be brave. Now let's get back to pork ribs. This next recipe is made with the third kind of ribs, the back pork ribs right here. Let me show you how to turn all these pork ribs into a wonderful, delicious Singapore pork rib soup, which they serve as snack anytime during the day. It's very, very popular, almost like a national dish in Singapore. All I have is some pork. You cut it up, you see, cut it up in little pieces like this. As I said, when you cut, it's easier to cut it on this side. If you cut it on this side, you can't see the rib. So I always cut it on this side because I can see the rib. One, two, three, four, five. So I cut it like this. This way, I never have to struggle. See? Never have to struggle. I put it right over here. Cut it up, cut it up. Otherwise, you can't tell where the ribs is. Once it's ready, we're going to brown this over in this frying pan. We'll brown this with a teeny tiny bit of oil, not much, okay? Just a tiny, tiny bit of oil. That's, I call, a tiny bit. And I put this ribs and let it brown, okay? The whole idea of browning it is, first, partially cook it, secondly, get rid of some of the extra, extra fat, so you can drain it off, okay? So it will be healthier. Let it brown. While you're browning this, I'm gonna show you how to make a simple Simple serving and dipping sauce for your rib. Here, I have some light soy. I have some dark soy to give that rich color, okay? And a combination, one and one. And then, to make it nice and hot, 
I am going to have some jalapeno, or you can use sereno, you can use a Thai chili. It depends on how hot. If you don't want the seed, you can remove the seed. Otherwise, you can have the seed. While you're chopping, you look at your ribs. Done. And then you put it right here. And then I want to show you another thing, OK? Just in case you don't like the seed, so it would not be as hot. This is how you do it. Look at that. You hold on to this, and you go like that. Look at that. You move, you move, and then you move. Look at this. And then you have all the seed out, and you have the whole thing like this. Isn't that interesting? Look at that. And then you can cut this up, and you can julian. Like this, stack them all up, and you can julian. After you touch fresh chili, make sure you wash your finger before you touch your lips, because otherwise you're going to have hot lips. <laughs> make sure to clean up at all times. Good habit. We we'll set this aside as a dipping sauce. We we'll set this aside right here. In the meantime, this is nice and brown. You know, in China, the chopstick is called the quick little boys. So for childless couple, they normally would go to the couple. We, we have child, and then we steal a couple of these chopsticks, and then they're going to have quick little boys. <laughs> and then I'm going to flavor this with soy sauce, Ooh. a tiny bit of sugar, and a tiny bit of salt, and a tiny bit of green onion, and of course, Water. Oh, let it boil. Let it boil. Oh, this is very unique soup. But aside from this, you have to add some other things to make this unique. Otherwise, it's just a soy sauce rip. Okay? Here, look at that. I have a few more things. I have some garlic. I'm going to say whack. The whole thing comes out like that. And I put this right here. And I have another one. Whack. The whole thing comes out. If you want to make it even smaller, mash. You go, <laughs> done. OK, right here. Just in case you cannot see it, you go home, you practice it yourself. I've been doing it for 17 years. And here, I have some whole white pepper, cinnamon bark, and also star anise. I'm going to put the whole thing right in here. This way, the whole thing is very, very unique. Now, while you're doing this, you're going to cover this up, OK, and let it simmer. In the meantime, we are going to get ready to serve with this wonderful sauce, dipping sauce. Put it right over here. If you make a mess, clean your mess up. And then, look at this. I am going to hold on to this and put the pork ribs right in here. This is very delicious, and it's great as a main dish or as a snack. And you serve the meat and also as a soup. You know what? If you want, you can put a, even a tiny, tiny bit of vegetable in there. And you sprinkle a tiny bit of extra green onion and fried shallot. And you use the dipping sauce to serve this beautiful, delicious Singapore. Rip soup. <laughs> and of course, the meatiest rib of all are the beef ribs. I want to show you a very traditional Chinese tea smoke technique that is perfect for beef ribs. No, I'm not going to smoke tea. I'm going to smoke tea with rice on beef rib. Now, of course, a lot of people like ribs barbecue pork rib in particular. You go and visit Chinatown or a lot of Chinese deli, they have all kind of barbecue, duck barbecue, pork barbecue, spare hanging around. This is it. You can bite it, and all you have to do is warm it up in your oven or microwave. You can eat it any time you want. You can even freeze them. And this is the wonderful barbecue pork rib that you can buy in the store in Chinese deli. And here, I'm going to get ready to do some of my meatiest, a lot of meat in this beef rib right here. All I have to do is take this piece out. This is a whole piece of rib. Look at that. Whole piece of rib. 
a lot of meat, a lot of meat around here. So this is good to smoke. Besides, you don't have to overcook the beef, okay? And then when this is done, I will cut this up right in half, like that. So you have two pieces, like this. And right after you get this ready, we're gonna marinate this. I'm gonna put this over here, and we're gonna marinate this. I'm gonna marinate this with a tiny bit of salt, okay? A tiny bit of salt. Make sure your hand is dry, okay? Let's dry it up our hand. Otherwise, the salt will stick to your fingers, right? And then turn it over to the other side. And then some freshly ground pepper, black pepper. Freshly ground red pepper. Black pepper all together, set it aside. And then we're gonna make a sauce, a marinated sauce, a barbecue sauce, my version. We have oyster flavor sauce, one portion of these, okay? And hoisin sauce, one portion, okay? One portion of these. And then a tiny bit of soy sauce, okay? And a tiny bit of tomato paste or ketchup. Give that nice reddish color. And then of course, mix it up. Stir, mix them all up. Nice and taste. It is good. <laughs> when I said it's good, it is good. Believe it or not. You don't believe it, you try it. It's good. Now, and then also, I'm gonna cut up a little ginger, minced ginger. This will give a little bite to it. Done. Minced ginger. Ay, done. Minced ginger. Done. This way, give that little punch to it. And mix it up, and you brush this whole thing. Okay? Now look at this. Brush this. Brush this. Whole thing over here. Brush this. And let it marinate for approximately two to four hours, okay? And then, when it's ready, you are going to line up this little baking pan with a little foil and put tea right around here, okay? This, use all kind of tea. And then use some brown sugar. This is a very traditional Chinese way to do it. Brown sugar tea, star anise, and also rice. Now, in China, they also use camphor wood. But in this country, a lot of chefs, you know, recently they found out Pan smoking or oven smoking is very, very good because you can use different kind of wood. You can use apple wood for salmon, shrimp, scallop, chicken, and duck. You can use cherry wood for pheas pheasants, duck, and chicken. Or you can use hickory wood for beef, pork, lamb, venison, and game. So you can all kind of things. And then you put this little, ah, uh, little can open on both sides as a stand. Then put this right over here. Okay, and then you put the rib right over here and you cover the whole thing up. You are going to bake it in the oven until the rib is done. We're going to take it over there and come. Now, let us see. We have one which is already done. A lot of people don't realize when you do ribs, you know why you do tea smoke? Because Tea smoke enhance the flavor, develop the flavor. And also, it develop nice, wonderful color. When this is done, you put this right over here and make the dish looks absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. You garnish it with green onion all over and it's very, very easy to eat. And everybody can do this rip a boom. Make no bones about it. Whether it is pork, beef, veal, or lamb, there is a rib recipe for just about everyone. Until next time, keep exploring your rib sticking favorite. And remember, if Yen can cook, so can you. Zai Jian. <laughs>